American Psycho is a satirical psychological thriller, co-written and directed by Mary Heron, based on a 1991 novel by Brett Easton Ellis. The film follows the story of Patrick Bateman, a yuppie New York City investment banking executive who lives an alternate second life where he indulges in his violent and hedonistic fantasies. Distinctly, this film embodies the stylish sensibilities of the 80s in regards to cultural aspects, overall visuals, and fashion. As Mark Twain famously stated, clothes make the men. Naked people have little or no influence on society. There's two ways to interpret this. One being, people perceive and form opinions according to the way that you present yourself. Or by dressing in a certain manner, you can actually shape yourself and impact the way that you behave which is in reference to enclosed cognition. For context, yuppie is a term coined in the early 1980s for a young urban professional with a well-paid job and fashionable lifestyle. Bateman takes this to another level as image is paramount to him. Since fashion and beauty serve as a marker of societal norms and aspirations, as well as a reflection of who people are, who they would like to be, or who they must be in order to survive. Bateman's fixation on displays of monetary value is very telling in and of itself. His choices and aesthetics, specifically fashion, as well as the reasoning behind the purchases, hold great significance on many levels. In the novel, there are numerous sections where the author goes into great detail about the clothing, music, equipment, brands of grooming products, etc. to such a immense degree, the same exact way by which the violence is written. This juxtaposition is translated onto the screen through the cinematography that is not only visually captivating but also very revealing, as it not only aids in setting the tone but gives viewers a glimpse into the mind of Bateman. The these techniques portray Patrick's mundane image-driven lifestyle with a deep fixation on details that are so stark visually to convey the lack of depth and the bleakness within. For instance, his apartment, in contrast with the later apartment of Paul Allen, that is very warm and much more saturated. The only vibrancy in Patrick's life are produced by material goods and hedonistic ventures, which produces equal pleasure in Patrick's mind. Let's focus on material objects, specifically clothing. American Psycho is very well known for its visuals. There are many prestigious and well-established high fashion brands mentioned in the novel, which have made their way to the screen visually and into the script. He also has a penchant for Valentino's suits and Oliver Peoples' glasses. Marcus and I even go to the same barber, although I have a slightly better haircut. The top three most mentioned brands are Armani, followed by Ralph Lauren and Rolex. Bateman's style is actually very revealing, despite being so similar to the men around him. For instance, one specific example in both the novel and film, Bateman sports a Rolex Datejust 16013 with a two-tone 18 karat gold and stainless steel case along with Jubilee bracelet. And touch the watch. For perspective, these timepieces were incredibly coveted and worn by businessmen of the 80s. So this is a quite obvious choice to opt for, but in terms of visual narrative, a specific model not only allows for him to project the image he is so set on, but mirrors Patrick's mind and worldview. We constantly see himself drawn to this sort of visual aesthetic. The brands mentioned shouldn't be overlooked. When a person purchases from a high fashion brand, they are not just buying a shirt or watch or bag, but into a rich history, lifestyle, belief system, and the overall image of the brand. This process is usually driven by self-fulfillment, and most people buy based on what they're personally drawn to. Patrick takes on these ideals of the high fashion brands he buys and curates them into his own. Of the list of many brands, with the most mentioned, Armani is the most noted, which is suitable for the time since the designer redefined menswear in the 80s. Like many, Armani's designs were an extension of his own personal aesthetics, beauty preferences, and idea of what luxury is. These variables together traditionally appeal to elite society as Armani is built upon three pillars 
class, quality, and exclusivity. This is the heart of Armani. And in relation to this story, these three pillars are the ones that shape not only the world of Bateman, but himself on a physical level. He follows strict skincare regime, workout routines, diets, and codes of dress. Now, John, you've got to wear clothes in proportion to your physique. There are definite do's and don'ts, good buddy, of wearing a bold striped shirt. A bold striped shirt calls for solid, colored, or discreetly patterned suits and ties. Along with cultural standards, that are ones by which he forms his identity around due to his lack of individuality. Ironically, with many references in the story, coming in at third, most mentioned, Ralph Lauren's mission statement is to inspire the dream of a better life through authenticity and timeless style. This concept in regards to Bateman is to create the appearance of this. The costume designer visually conveys how there is a disconnect between the true nature and the idealized image that is held in such high respect such as the ones that can be found in GQ and Esquire, along with inspiration from real men on Wall Street, to ground these looks into reality. Bruce Pask, men's fashion director at Bergdorf Goodman states, in the late 80s, there was a rapid expansion of men's high fashion, a heightened awareness of designer labels, and a vast array of grooming and beauty products entering the market for the first time that were targeted specifically to men. Bateman is the byproduct of his culture and a reflection of the men around him who all on the surface are equal counterparts of similar careers, income, relationships, and lifestyles. But Bateman differs considerably within, as we constantly have insight into his fears. There is an idea of a Patrick Bateman, some kind of abstraction, but there is no real me, only an entity, something illusory. We get to see his true thoughts, feelings, and desires. This desire specifically to upkeep image is very compulsive. With psychological perspective, we can see that these habits highlight the controlling nature and impulsive thoughts in relation to having an object of desire. On the surface though, he is very much like the men around him. He is never truly present in a moment. Part of his mind is always attentive of upholding his image. Have you ever wanted to Make someone happy? What? No, put it in the cart. Sorry. I'm not going anywhere unless we have a reservation. There is a moment of sheer panic when I realize that Paul's apartment overlooks the park. But this dictates practically Bateman's whole life. There is a very deep id, ego, and super ego power struggle within. But this is masked by the social identity. And in Patrick's case, this is made up by collected pieces from others. He constantly pays attention to these details of not only himself, but others. I said, do not wear that outfit again. Wear a dress, a skirt or something. Nice tie. How the hell are you? Alan has mistaken me for this dickhead Marcus Halberstram. It seems logical because Marcus also works at PNP and in fact does the same exact thing I do. He also has a pension for Valentino suits. And I hate that job anyway. I see why you just don't quit. Because I want to fit in. Though Bateman has conjured up fragments of others in terms of outward beauty that is executed through sophisticated imagery, the detailed art direction captures the inner degradation of him as a man. But Bateman never sees himself despite the amount of focus on producing the social and self-perception he deems valuable. Reflections are highly symbolic of this film. This is not an unusual film technique, but how it functions in American Psycho is very distinct. For example, in the film Black Swan, mirrors provide a vehicle to look into Nina's character. Her self-awareness produced by her ego, she is very fearful of her internal struggles. The mirror provides a space for self-awareness, to reflect on what is happening. No matter how extreme a situation may be, her ego keeps advocating and providing reason. Throughout the imbalance of power, Patrick has the complete opposite. He displays a lack of ego. The mirror for him is very welcoming, and he is not seeing himself through a lens of depth. He cannot differentiate what he is viewing. Everything is taken at surface value, and this is where we begin to see reality and imaginary events overlap. This inability desensitizes him, because if everything is surface value, what is the difference between a concept, a person, and an object? 
this inability is what creates a blind spot. I feel lethal, on the verge of frenzy. I think my mask of sanity is about to slip. That can be further explained by Freudian theory, where the superego and id form tension. So getting ready in the morning is just as casual as preparing to murder his self-defined nemesis, Paul Allen. He goes as far to protect his suit. Is that a raincoat? Yes, it is! And holds this to be high priority. His id, which is the primitive, instinctual part of the mind that possesses aggression and sexual drive, is imbalanced in combination with the superego, which is the critical, moralizing role. With a lack of ego, there is a lack of mediating between these two ends of the spectrum. This explains more of Patrick's indifference, his black and white thinking, and how his views are skewed. The labels and details provide great insight. The very first reflection in the film is a poster for Les Mis, which is often referenced throughout the movie. This captures Patrick's disconnect and how everything has been turned into a point of social status. The play explores themes that are rather ironic within the setting. It explores themes of class struggle, inequality, and inhumanity. In the same way that Patrick never really reflects on himself, he does not ever reflect on these themes. Even this has been transformed from a conceptual, artistic, intellectual experience into an object that Bateman decides to use to impress others in relation to intelligence and wealth. Next Saturday? Sure. Can't, I'm afraid. I'm not naive, Les Mis. Listen, I've really got to go. I'll, Christ, I'll call you. By seeing himself in this poster, it's not a moment of observation of the object, but observation of himself. It's the upkeep of his own preferred self-perception. This is when one observes their own behavior and self-concepts. But Patrick views, again, as on pure image rather than any internal development or depth. Reflections are just as empty as life is to him. For example, many find fulfillment and development while pursuing something, such as a career, despite holding such an esteemed position. In defining himself within yuppie culture, he's never really shown working too much. When walked in on, he pretends to be on the phone discussing clothing, rather than choosing to act as if he were working. Discreetly patterned suits and ties. Yes, always tip the uh, stylist 15% producing a total display of knowledge and wealth in relation to clothing, which is by extension part of his image. This is the display he considers to be acceptable, and the world around him in this film reassures that this internal state is not actually that important. But inside doesn't matter. Constantly, identity is disregarded throughout the film. What is within tends to not be valued. This is depicted through the constant misidentifications within their own social circle. This has great influence on our self-concept and dictates many directions of our thoughts and actions. But Bateman does not consider himself to be a person of sorts. He has many feelings of absence and vacancy. The clothing, apartment, career, relationships, etc. animate him to a degree. But this, to some extent, is an illusion, despite being physically there. The film touches on this and the novel gives further insight into these thoughts. And you can shake my hand and feel flesh gripping yours and maybe you can even sense our lifestyles are probably comparable. I simply am not there. This is tangibly manifested outward through Patrick's relationship to his image. Despite his colleagues and friends dressing very similarly, Bateman is playing a role constantly and creates further competition in his mind. Even when wanting to admit what he has done and genuinely displaying emotion, the most fleeting moment of ego, this is met with the same disdain he has shown to others. While the other men in their suits may just feel they're presenting themselves in the best manner, dressing to their personal taste, and interacting with clothing for lifestyle, so as to be dressed for work, social functions, etc. In these cases, clothing serves them, but Bateman is practically imprisoned by his lifestyle and status. His clothing, and by extension image, is not only a mask, part of a cage by which he cannot escape. Hence the final line of the novel and sign in the film, this is not an exit. It should be noted the first line of the novel is, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. These are in reference to Dante's Inferno, and no exit, that depict fictional tellings of hell. But even after admitting this, there is no catharsis. 
My punishment continues to elude me, and I gain no deeper knowledge of myself. The ending of this film is left incredibly open-ended for us to interpret. But since Bateman is an unreliable narrator, these references do provide some insight. The visual narration of fashion in this film showcases the disconnect of appearance to one's true self and how the formation of oneself out of others forms a facade, the same way that the brands and labels represent the preferred persona tangibly, taking on all of the values, morals, imagery, and lifestyles associated, and covers up the man beneath, rather than embracing him. In this specific case, the clothing wears Patrick, he does not wear the clothing. Though this is a story, through this lens there is a lot of truth. Fashion in real life can function in a similar manner through presenting an image to the world that we covet, communication of values through our brands of choice, the symbolic meanings of each individual piece due to the rich history behind it, and the experience as well as the impact of wearing clothes in relation to a person as an individual. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.